happy Monday, everyone. I hope you've had a great week. It's beautiful, sunny, but very chilly here in Kimberly. Good day to stay in and paint. Today's 10 Minute Monday Art Tips, I am going to be talking to you about how to know when your painting is finished. I've got a few little tips for you that I think you will appreciate. Not everybody paints in the same manner as I do. I am the type of artist who likes to have several paintings on the go at once. And then I will go through a stage where all these half finished paintings, I'll finish them off all in a row. And it's my way. I like doing it that way. I don't get bored. It keeps my enthusiasm up, keeps my interest up. Some days it's a mountain, some days it's a tree painting, some days, you know, I bounce around. So this one is of Island Lake, the mountains and trees above Island Lake. And I started about two and a half years ago, and I'm just going to put the finishing strokes on it either today or tomorrow, hopefully, if all goes well. She's almost done, but I'm at the stage where I have to take time to pause and look. And it is a really good idea to not rush this stage at all. There's one little snow pattern. It's not even in view. That I wanted to let me see if you can eat up here that I my uh, other student actually pointed out this morning thank you Sue it's been bothering my eye as well I've got to put a stroke there one stroke so I also want to put a bit more snow pattern in this section another few strokes it can go too far, too fast, really quickly. So do not push this stage. Be very cautious and just take your time. Take your time. And you also need to look at your painting at different times of the day. Because in the evening when it's like, not very bright in your studio space it can really show off whether or not your values are appropriate if it does not look very good in like kind of dark semi-dark light then you've got a bit of value work to do another good idea is to take a photo on your camera of your finished painting and look at it on the small little screen on your on your cell phone or on your iPad and it will surprisingly show up a lot of errors that can be there without you knowing it. So that is a really good tip and will often just shockingly show you where you've made slight errors in judgment. This is also the stage where you just gotta ponder and wait and let the painting talk to you and it will tell you what needs to be done. The other reason why you need to take time and really be cautious is because you also do not want to work away on a painting when you are starting to get creative fatigue. And that is very important because a lot of painters will keep on painting uh, past that breaking point. They want to get the painting finished, they're almost there, etc. And you can lose it so fast when your mind is not sharp. So just beware of that fatigue factor. Some of my students have it after an hour and a half. Some can paint for four hours and not reach that point. It is a stamina thing. So just remember that the more you paint, the longer you'll be able to paint. And the more consistently the, you paint, the longer you'll be able to paint. But if you only come at this once a week, you have an hour and a half and your brain can shut off. Your eyes start glazing over, you get tired, you start sighing, things become an effort. 
you just got to walk away, go have a cup of tea, and you can go back to it. But don't push yourself because there's no coming back from that and you can destroy a perfectly good painting in a blink. If you work when you are fatigued, it's not going to be a good scenario. I even did a stroke the other day, right here. Put my tree trunk in way too low. It was too bright. It was at the end of my day and it's got to disappear now. It creates more work for you if you try. And I have been doing this a long time and I still can, every once in a while, go too far. It happens to the best of us. It happens to everyone. So the thing with oil paints is that they are very forgiving. That's why we like oils. That's my favorite, as you know. Not that there is anything wrong with watercolors or acrylics or gouache or any of that. All great materials, but I, uh, you all know me and you know I'm a bit biased towards oil paints because that's what I learned on. I tried watercolors when I was young. It wasn't my thing. If any of you have found some for very forgiving watercolors, let me know because I would be interested in trying them. I like the freedom of an oil painting because, you know, it layers up. And I like this stage of the oil painting process. Not sure if it's exactly the same with the other mediums. Maybe you can please leave me a comment. Let me know. Um, what else? There was another thing I needed to tell you. Wonder what it was. Um, make sure you've got your layers, your split paint. When you begin your painting, uh, you block in your colors. That's when you block it in. This is where the fun really happens because you can get that split color. This is where you layer it up. This is where you cover up a lot of your uh, white canvas that may be showing. This is where you do the detail work. This, on occasion, I've been using this big brush. It's a number eight to do a lot of my work here, but I did have to pull out a number four the other day. This is the part where you can do some detail work very last day so I'm not talking number twos just keep that in mind but I am still using my big brush at this stage some of the times my number four comes out just for the detail bits uh, like my tree trunks and don't forget your light source that's a good time to make sure that your light, sor light source is consistent all the way through your painting you know, you don't want to have a rock with a light hitting one side and then the trees will have the light hitting on the other side. This is where you do your little checklist. Make sure you've hit all the points. All those rules. Make sure your focal point's not in the middle. Uh, check your center of your canvas. Make sure nothing is pointing right to it. Double check that all your tree branches aren't all in a row. All these little things that you've all learned as we go. This is the stage where you can correct any of those errors. And again, taking that little photo on your phone will work wonders for making those small, minute changes very obvious to you. And then you can sign it. And when you sign it, uh, be aware that you want to take a color from your painting and sign it. I normally sign it in the lower right or left corner, but everybody's got a different way of doing that. And you do not want it too close to the edge of your canvas if you are going to at some point frame your canvas. So make sure you leave space at the edge so that your signature does not get covered up by a frame. If you're going to keep it unframed, make sure you paint the sides of your canvases. Some people like to paint it all in one solid color. Other people, like myself, wrap the painting view all the way around the side. For me, it just extends the painting itself. But that's your decision but you do not want white canvas showing anywhere. It needs to be finished. Your edges need to be finished. 
It's like leaving a pair of pants unhemmed if you leave your edges blank. So those are a few of my tips for today. I hope they were helpful to you. And I hope you have a great week. And let me know what you're working on. Do you enjoy the finishing part of your painting? Give me some feedback and let me know what you're up to. And have a great week. Bye for now.